ladies and gentlemen how's it going it's your boy frank with another diy so today i'm working on this 2010 uh, mazda cx-5 which came in with some check engine errors so let's go ahead and plug in the machine and see what errors we are having stay tuned so as i mentioned to you guys this is a mazda cx-5 2010 year model with the 2.2 diesel engine in it it has some errors uh and it's very very dirty by the way Ooh. i believe you guys can see it right there so what we're going to do is to plug in on the machine and see what kind of errors you're having our diagnostic tool is a thing car uh we are using the thing bag 2 which is the second version of this line it's pretty affordable so basically uh it allows you to search for the specific vehicle that you're using and for this specific one we chosen to do the automatic uh search so after you choose the brand it automatically detects the vehicle as you guys are seeing over there you can just confirm and after that uh you have some options and the first one is the health report so basically it will run through the all um ecus or pcms and all type of um, computers that you have on your car and check if you have specific errors on those specific computers so as you can see right there it's going through each module that is installed on this specific Mazda uh, it's funny that on this vehicle it's, it was uh, a very fast actually I think due to the, the year model of, of this vehicle uh, sometimes you will find on some older vehicles taking uh, a longer time to actually fetch the errors so once the process is done you can select each uh, one of the modules to see the errors in our case we ended up selecting the PCM uh, and there you have a lot of options where uh, at this moment was important to one to us to retrieve the errors that uh, actually we had on the vehicle and as you can see right there we have uh, an error related with EGR uh, insufficient flow uh, detected P04401 usually that error is related with uh, the EGR and intake being clogged so as you guys saw on the diagnosis the main issue is with the EGR valve I bet this is related with carbon buildup so what we are going to do is just to remove the intake pipe, pipe remove the battery and make sure that we have enough space to remove the EGR. So guys, we managed to remove a lot of parts we managed to remove the EGR cooler we are still missing to remove the EGR but let me just show you how some parts are looking so this is the exhaust side and one of my biggest concerns is with the EGR cooler let me try to see if can. so you can definitely see how clogged the EGR cooler is also I think you guys can see just right there on this pipe that goes to the EGR how bad this thing was so right there is the shut off valve of the EGR you can see that there is a flap there inside yeah you still have to remove this side and we will be done for now so we finally managed to remove the EGR and folks this thing is full of carbon buildup oh yeah Let me just show you inside. Yep. 
So definitely this thing is really really bad. Yeah folks, so we managed to remove the intake and as you guys have seen over there it's full of carbon. Let me just show you right here on the vehicle side you can definitely see how bad it's looking. Days later. And today we are doing the cleanups on this carbon buildup that we have around here. So what will be our trick? We are going to use the boroscope to see if the valves are, are closed to do the blasting. And also we will need to remove that front wheel. So that's why I'm checking up the car to remove the wheel. So in order to us to get access to the uh, crank pulley in order to rotate the engine. We get the wheel removed and then what you have to do next is to remove this cover in order to expose your crank pulley. And you're having our Dogos company here. They are real supporters. <laughs> now you see the cover is out so we should be able to turn on that bad boy. Doki doki. So at this point uh, we were using our boroscope. We are just inserting it in one of the pots in order to check our valve so the our goal here is to ensure that we have uh, the valve on that specific cylinder uh, or on that specific port uh, shut off uh, we are now rotating the engine and while we are rotating the engine we keep the we keep our eye in the valve uh, or in the monitor and as you can see it's closed so it's ready for the blast so now that we know that that port is specifically closed we now have the vacuum set it up i will be cleaning up and sucking all the dirt i'm just pausing here guys just to show you how the first three ports that we already cleaned up are looking versus the other ones that still need to be cleaned and this one is the one that we are cleaning up right now let me just try to get some focus and you guys can definitely see the amount of carbon buildup that those guys have and those are the ones that we already cleaned up as you guys may be seeing there many adorable hours later so after some good hours of cleaning this is how the intake is looking now much later other thing that we are still working on is the intake still progress still in progress and one thing that is really important to clean up is this bad boy that sits over there because usually it gets so clogged that it also flags uh, uh, errors related with EGR. So let me crack it open now. Uh, and after struggling a bit because it has it stuck because of the carbon, look at this. Look at this. Man. So as you can see, it's really, really, really clogged and we need to clean up this thing also because it provides vital information of supply of uh, exhaust fumes from here to that side. So 
Firefox for your appreciation. This is how the thing looks like when almost all the carbon is cleaned. So as you can see, this is a passage of fumes. Um, and yeah, it causes those type of errors when it's bad. Look at the amount of carbon that we already took up from the intake and all the additional accessories. On the intake, you have to make sure that the hole that actually goes on this side, it also is free and unclogged. And as you can see, in our case, it was clogged. So we are just also unclogging it up. Three days so, later. This is what I managed to clean uh, by hand. On the intake, so now I want to pressure wash it. And also, I want to try to unclog this uh, EGR cooler. Now, we applied some degreaser. As you guys can see, it's reacting. So we'll just let it do its job and then we'll pressure wash it. So, just like that, folks. We now have the EGR cooler cleaned off. Also, we do have the intake clean, as you may be seeing over there. So now it's time to put all those items back on the car. We should be ready to go. After struggling, mounting everything, we have everything on place. I'm just going to pour some water and start her up. Whew, what a day. Whew. So yeah, folks, we are done. The car, as you guys can see right now, the engine is looking very nice. The car is driving very nice. The power has been restored. In long time, I think uh, it would uh, also affect on the fuel economy. I, I believe it will increase the fuel economy as it has no restrictions now on the intake and so on. So that's it. So yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm here with my buddy Daniel. We were just wrapping up on this video and we see you around. Cheers. Let me tell you a secret. Subscribe.